I'd probably watch that Bryce Harper walk-off 75,000 times last night staring at my ceiling. I couldn't fall asleep. What is going on, everyone? That victory last night, it tastes sweet. It does. Now, does that fix all the holes the Phillies have? No, it doesn't, all right? I still know that there is plenty of flaws right now with the Philadelphia Phillies, but it was nice to see Bryce Harper deliver. It was nice to see Bryce Harper be the guy to step up for this team and really be a difference maker. Now, when I woke up this morning, I saw the news reported by Matt Gelb of The Athletic that Matt Klintak has been brought back for a couple years here, under the radar. And that's something that the Phillies have done with McPhail as well. This is something that has been done throughout baseball as well. It's not just a Phillies thing. It's weird. Baseball is weird as hell. But no report on it. It's just quiet. It just goes under the radar. And Matt Klentak has been brought back for the Phillies and extended for a couple of years now. We will get to that. But first, I want to talk about how Bryce Harper was the man yesterday. And and just taking a look at his stats right now with runners in scoring position as it is, it's wild. He's hitting 421 with 45 RBIs and 5 home runs. It's unbelievable what this guy does when there are men in scoring position. Now it's to the extreme when nobody's on and his approach to the plate is different and obviously it factors in how the pitchers have to pitch to him when there are men on. But man, when he is locked in with people on in scoring position, it's absurd what he can do with the baseball. And that ball was smoked yesterday. Smoked the center field. I mean, the home run he hit was smoked as well in the second inning. The three-run bomb the center field. That was demolished. But the crack in that ninth inning, the crack crack of the bat when the ball hit the beautiful barrel and went out to center field. It was crazy, really. I was on the edge of my seat going ridiculously nuts, freaking the hell out. Now, Pollock, did he misplay it out there in center field? Should he have gotten his body in front of him? Sure, but the ball was smoked. Let's not deny the fact that that ball was murdered. He put the barrel on it. And he stepped up and he was the leader. I'm telling you, it's different. It's different that it's him doing it. Now, what does that mean for tonight and Nick Pavetta? I mean, that doesn't really correlate. But maybe there was some emotion involved behind this. Enough emotion to maybe put this team on a rise, on a ride? Like, obviously, I'm putting in blind fan optimism here. Hoping. But these are the type of games that if you are to ride with it if it is to spark some sort of emotion these are the type of games that do that where your emotional leaders step up and and really put the team on their back what I saw Bryce Harper do yesterday we haven't seen here in Philadelphia yet that's just reality and the fact that we lost 16 to 2 the night before which was devastating right really embarrassing and, and the next night, you have, a, you have a lead in the ninth inning, and you lose it with the three-run home run that Hector Neris allows. You can't allow two devastating losses like that occur back-to-back. Not with where the Philly season is going right now. So for him to step up and do that, it was unreal. Literally unreal. His reaction... Fist pumps coming around second base after he he had the walk off. His teammates coming up to him, him dropping the f bomb, hugging Real Muto. Just the raw emotion of Bryce Harper's face when he is swinging his arms in excitement, freaking out, going like ah. I love it. I love it. I embraced it. I enjoyed the moment. I lived in the moment. There hasn't been much to really get me going with this baseball team as of late. And deservingly so, right? I mean, really. I don't know what any fan could see from this baseball team as of late and been excited for and been pumped up about. There's nothing there. But this game was different, and it it seems isolated. It seemed isolated. Like, we know and we understand when you take a look at the whole thing where this team really is. But that moment there, it was like a defining moment so far for Bryce Harper with the Philadelphia Phillies. And it's funny because I listen to sports radio all day long, and that was a big topic yesterday after we lost 16-2. to 
It was, where, where has Bryce Harper been? Right? It seemed like Bryce Harper has just been a guy out there. Like, he hasn't had that game. He hasn't had that moment. He hasn't had that at-bat that won a game, that changed everything, that defined him as a leader. He used to be, it seemed like from afar at least, this brat, this annoying guy, this dude with cocky attitude. Now we look at him as this mature professional. Now granted, when we thought that, he was 19, 20, 21, younger, and now he's more mature. But we haven't seen that moment. And then, the same day that we talk about it as a city, as a sports town, on sports radio all day long, he ends up making it happen that night? It's crazy how sports works. It really does. So for me, that this game seems isolated because I look at it as a Bryce Harper perspective. That's what we paid the guy to do. Be the leader. Come up clutch. Make it happen. Knock in the winning run. And you just look at his his numbers with runners in scoring position, and it's mind-blowing. It really, really is mind-blowing. I need a nice sip of coffee today. I'm struggling. I hit the snooze button way too many times this morning. Let's get into Matt Klintak being brought back. They extended his contract. I guess brought back isn't the right words. It's weird that they do it like this where nobody knows and it goes flying under the radar. But Matt Gelb, according to his sources, reports it on The Athletic. It's weird, right? Because everyone's so pissed off at Matt Klentak. He didn't address the starting pitching. You look at who comes off the bench and pinch hitting opportunities. It's guys like Andrew Knapp, Roman Quinn, things of that nature. And we freak the hell out. As much as I agree that I can't believe we looked at our starting pitching and believed it would be different, as much as I look at our prospect pool and say, where the hell have our prospects been, right? As much as I look at the bench, and I agree, I agree with all these things. I also have to factor in, though, that you can only do so much in one offseason, right? You can't just build a title in one offseason. Now, I'm not supporting Matt Klintak. I think he is a flawed GM so far. He is an outstanding but I do need to be realistic on how much you can possibly acquire in one offseason. And we did sign Bryce Harper. We did give up two prospects for JT Real Muto. And one of those being Sixto Sanchez, of course. Who else did we acquire? Gene Segura, right? We signed Andrew McCutcheon. And sadly, the injury took him away from this squad. But the addition of Jay Bruce, even though he's injured, and that's totally going to kill us now. And he's probably going to be on the I.L., That Jay Bruce acquisition was insane and seriously could have changed the season for us. He's the one helping us stay alive here. That and the fact that the NL stinks when it comes to the wild card. So, like, you can only add so much. You can't add all that and then add four starters in the offseason. I'm just playing devil's advocate here with the, the people who hate Matt Klintak. But at the same time, he had to have addressed something. To go in with the same exact starting pitchers, it's it's mind-blowing. And then it's then it's the things like, you see Boston go out and get Kashner. Well, I understand Kashner is not a legitimate, insane threat, but guess what? We're throwing Vince Velasquez out there. We're throwing Nick Pavetta out there. We're throwing, you know, who else out there all season long? Jared Eikhoff. This is the time where you make a savvy move, like go out and get Kashner before the deadline. Things of that nature. Right now, you don't need to give up the farm for a rental, but you can go out and get someone like a Kashner, who, you know, he's he's not fantastic. He's not a shutdown ace, but he's going to help because we're that pathetic there. Those are the type of moves you need to make. So, Klentak will be here for the future. McPhail will be here for the future. His, his extension came... A little bit ago. And he obviously had those comments to the media stating, you know, we're not going to give up the arm. And if we're not in contention, we're not going to be giving up things. And Matt Gelb spoke about it today 
said it was just a weird vibe when he was talking, because he was there as a media member. It was a weird vibe hearing McPhail talk. So it's a weird place to be in right now as a Philadelphia Phillies fan with these two guys in your upper management. What is Matt Klintak? He made all these acquisitions, but guess what? We're underachieving, so what does that mean? He didn't help out the the starting pitching. And he goes out and, and, and they claim they don't want to spend all this money on pitching, right? Especially older pitchers because they their arms don't last that long. They don't want to give out these mo- massive contracts to pitchers. But then we go out and look at our bullpen. They're all old relievers that are banged the hell up and can't perform. So what does that mean? And once again, don't get me started on the, the prospect pool. But you take a look at from when Matt Klintak was here. And prospects are just prospects, right? You can believe the hype all you want. But until they actually deliver in the majors, you don't know what they are. Well, you hear names like Alec Boehm. Obviously, everyone's eyebrows is raised. Mickey Moniak. That kid Stott that we drafted this year. He's been unreal so far in A-ball. So when you look at the prospects that just Klintak has drafted... Where there's some noise around that. So how do you feel about that when it comes to Klintak coming back? There's some noise surrounding them. Whatever that means. They're not high in the overall baseball prospect pools. They're not top ranked. But they have some noise surrounding them. This is it. This is it. We're riding and dying right now with Matt Klintak and and McPhail. Let's see how it all plays out. So I want to know your thoughts on Bryce Harper's walk-off. I'm not over it yet. I'm still embracing it. But, you know, things can change real quickly, especially tonight when I watch this baseball team play the Dodgers again. You know, a nice win. Okay, now we're talking about something. Now we have a nice little spark. We lose. We're back to where we were. We're back to square one. So let me know your thoughts down below. See you guys next time.